there was a conference at the University of St. Thomas Law School. The conference was Exploring Public Corruption, Its Causes, Consequences, and Remedies. And political corruption is my beat, so, so I came up for it. And there was, a, there was an air of disbelief in the room, like, why are we doing this? Minnesota's not corrupt. And there's a local, uh, there's a local defense attorney, uh, Joseph Freeberg. I looked up my notes because I wanted to quote him. He said, the bribes that are talked about here would be considered insults in Chicago rather than bribes. If I specialized in defending cases of public corruption, I would starve to death. So, there is a, there we go, Minnesota is proud of its reputation for clean government, and I think that's, that pride has something to do with the resistance that this uh, second fraud story has gotten here. If you came to Chicago and said, your legal system is corrupt, well, yeah, what else is new? You come here and say that, and that message is not welcomed. That message has not been welcomed now. Bill, how I personally got involved, I heard about the second fraud sometime last fall, and my girlfriend is a lawyer, and I said, I heard about this case today. The, the cr bankrupt criminal guy's corporate attorney is also uh, the criminal bankrupt guy's receiver and the bankrupt guy's tr uh, bankruptcy trustee, and she said, oh, no, that's impossible. No, you must have misunderstood. And I, I said, no, no, there's this case in Minnesota. And she said, no, no, no court in the country would do that. You're wrong. And that's when I knew I had a book here. <laughs> Let's go over to Billy Presida because, as Billy said, he doesn't need a microphone. Uh, Billy, you've been involved in a lot of uh, bankruptcy action for years. Um, can, can you run down for us, and, and there's never enough time in a documentary to, to get in all the things that, that people have to say. You were there in the early days of this. Can you tell us again what the distinctions are between uh, a corporate attorney, uh, a receiver, a trustee, and exactly what transpired in those immediate days right after this, this fraud was uncovered. Well, first off, uh, we got no mic again. First off, I have never, ever, I don't think it's ever been done before, I don't think ever has a criminal's attorney been appointed receiver, and I've never seen a receiver also be a trustee. Just doesn't happen. Uh, it's like if, if a company goes bankrupt, their lawyer doesn't get to do anything other than represent the company, never do they get to uh, become the receiver and or trustee. This matter was much more ridiculous, and this is probably the biggest misuse of justice I have ever seen uh, in my career. Um, you know, I, I remember after getting appointed receiver, and, am I on it? I don't know. I remember after getting appointed receiver, I, 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 I called Kelly, I flew in, he picked the most expensive restaurant in town. I gave him my strategy, which, which was gonna be unique because there were so many victims that lost so much money. I had all of these investment funds were willing to volunteer staff. Because my first thing I said was, this thing will cost a fortune unless we get some people from the creditor's side to work for free. Plus, they know where the money is. He ordered the most expensive bottle of wine, the most expensive restaurant. We were supposed to meet again at nine o'clock in the morning. As he got up, I noticed the check was right there. He invited me, and I got stuck with the check. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first thing. The, 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 then we were supposed to meet at nine in the morning. I called him at nine. He saw he said, I called every hour. I called at nine, I called at 10. I sat in his office. This was the next day we were supposed to meet. The strategy was, hey, you know Minnesota, you know the court system, I know how to run companies. I'll do this, let me take some of the staff that I'm getting, uh, that's being volunteered, and you go deal with all this criminal stuff. Never heard from it. Then, people started coming to me like there were all these guys in black suits and you know CIA looking types, and it was basically 
a, a kind of a very shadowy thing. I, I was in the South Bronx in construction for 15 years, so I don't scare too easy. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was actually nervous being in Minnesota working on the better game. <laughs> and, and, and then the kind of, then that meeting happened where he walked in with eight attorneys. And, and then really where the misuse of justice came, and I, I, I'll, I'll be brief, but I walk in with an attorney into Judge Montgomery's court. We prepared for 10 hours, at least. My lawyer had an entire yellow notebook ready to make his presentation. So I walk in with one attorney. Petters walks in, and by the way, the most amazing thing, he hasn't been hired yet. So think about it. While I was receiver, Venom and, what's it called, Venom and uh, Link was in Venom? There was eight attorneys, he was using their offices. He wasn't even the receiver yet. They, he walked into the, the courtroom with no less than a dozen attorneys. After all of his chummy chummy, hi hi, smile smile with Judge Montgomery, he got at least a half hour, 40 minutes to make his case about everything. Finally gets to my attorney, and you would have thought I was appointed by a judge in uh, Illinois at the bequest of a dozen creditors representing $2 billion. You would think the judge would want to at least say, hey, Mr. Presida, can I talk, well, who are you? Not only did the judge not ask for any testimony from me as to my credentials, background, or any of the creditors that were standing in the courtroom, as my lawyer gets up, and we had a Minnesota lawyer, so I thought I wasn't going to get completely home job. He is 30 seconds into his dissertation, and the judge goes, you have a minute to wrap up. If that is not criminal, I don't know what is. 